You can support Retro Recollections on Patreon, just like these wonderful folks. Thank you for your support. Hi everyone, welcome back to another Retro Recollections. We're still on with the uh, humble Amiga, and today I've got another little um, add-on that I was talking about before, and that is the floppy drive switch, DFO to DF1, so I can um, alternate between the GoTech in the drive and these uh, external drives that I've got, so that'll be very useful. Uh, so we're going to be installing this today. Without any further ado, let's get on. Installation of the DF0 switcher is fairly straightforward. The PCB sits in the chip socket occupied by the right CIA chip in the A500, the chip that manages floppy drive control. Essentially, this little device switches floppy devices by rerouting the wiring coming from the CIA chip, basically fooling the Amiga into thinking the external drive is mounted internally. The only downside is when the switch is flipped, the internal drive is disabled. So, carefully pull out the CIA chip, mount the PCB in its place, then seat the CIA chip in the socket on the PCB. Couldn't be much simpler. Quick test before we put it all back together. Seems to be functioning as it should. The only decision now is where to place the switch. I have decided to keep the GoTech drive in place internally because I will be using this the majority of the time as DF0. I didn't want to start drilling holes in this old brittle case, nor did I want to have wires and the switch hanging out of it. I came to the conclusion that the best place to mount the switch would be in an area where there is already a hole that's not really being used. The floppy button hole on the right hand side of the case. 
This is ideal since due to the length of the switch cabling it really needed to go somewhere in this vicinity anyway and the 3D printed GoTek frame can easily be modified to accommodate it. I make sure to put a little insulating tape on the back of the switch PCB just in case. All that was required was to snip off the fake button on the GoTek frame and cut out a little corner. It looks like the switch should fit nicely in this area, although I will have to file down the buttonhole a little so that the case can be closed as the switch is a little taller than the original button. Once this is done, the GoTek can be installed once again. The switch fits nicely under it, and even better, by loosening the GoTek from its frame to install it, then tightening it back up again, it actually holds it in place without any further securing. Let's get it back together and see it in action properly. Okay, the switch is installed. Uh, as you can see, I have installed it in the old floppy button compartment because I'm keeping the GoTek in there. I didn't want to have a drill a hole in this case, as brittle as it is. Um, I've, you know, it's a lot of the uh, the screw holes and that are very brittle, so. I will eventually need or will need replacing but for now it serves its purpose so I've um, placed the switch in the old floppy hole so to speak uh, and um, we're going to give it a quick test now to see if it's all working as it should so in this position facing the wall it should be set to internal as DFO so we're going to try that now I'm going to turn on the Turn on the Amiga, and if you can see there, you should get the, the flash floppy screen. There we go. So it's set to the flash floppy is set to there. So that's working fine. Right. To test this now with these, let's turn it off, and I'm going to flip the switch to forward position. Now, this is a dual drive here, so what we're going to do now is I've got a disc in here, which is Amiga, Amiga Test Kit. So that, at the moment, the top drive, which is the modified floppy drive, PC floppy drive, I should say, it works natively on Amiga now is set to DF1 so with the switch flipped that should now become DF0 so let's turn on the Amiga and we should see activity so we've got drive activity and we've got the Amiga test kit software up and running great 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it off again. And as I explained in my previous video for when I did the when I got this um, little gadget for e external um, floppy drives, and you can see the video if you it'll be in the description. This will allow me to use an Amiga or a GoTech drive as the F1 and a PC floppy drive. So this is actually an old laptop uh, floppy drive that I'm using for now. I'm going to eventually I'm just going to get a regular sized three and a half inch um, floppy drive to replace that. But with the beauty of this, you can switch which one is DF1, which one's DF2. So at the minute that's DF1, DF2, although because that switch is on, this is DF0 and this is undetected. So if I flip the, the, the jumper switches on, on the PCB at the back here, this now becomes DF1, but with that switched, it's DF0. So what should happen now is if I put that into there and boot up, turn it on, we should get activity in that drive. Hang on, something's not quite working. Oh, yes it is. It's a little bit slower, that one. Uh, you can, as you can see, the drive activity is, is happening. There we go again. Still got the test kit running. Right, turning off. Flip the switch back. That'll still activate because it's got a disc in it. But the screen should be showing the flash floppy, which it is. Flash floppy menu. So I'm really pleased with this solution from Amiga Kit. There are other, obviously other manufacturers that uh, produce this kit, this little uh, switcher, and you can also build it yourself. I wasn't really up for that. I just wanted to get it installed. Um, yeah, Amiga Kit, I believe I've paid less than £15 altogether, something like that, all on eBay. One thing to note, um, um, these Amigas use the old style um, and not particularly good quality sockets. So, and the, the, um, the PCB had the nice rounded pins and it was struggling to go in, it was kept popping out. So what I had to do was just like, I lightly sanded the pins on the PCB and then placed it in and it was fine, it stayed in place and it was working fine as you saw. So yeah, I'm really pleased with this. It's definitely going to be very useful once I start getting some more original software and everything like that and for backups and all sorts of stuff. So I'm very happy with this. All I'm waiting for now is, a, is the only other, probably the only other um, upgrade I might do is something along the lines of an accelerator or extra fast wrap, something like that, but that won't be probably for a while. So I can start playing a bit more and yes, I'm very happy. I've got uh, a drive, floppy drive selector. Majority of the time I'll be using the, um, the GoTech anyway, so that's staying internal. And I've got a, a solution to use any floppy drive pretty much that I want uh, with the Amiga. So what more can you want? <laughs> so thank you very much for watching. I hope this was useful if you're thinking of getting any of these sort of upgrades. Check out the description, there'll be loads of information there. As to, I'll put a link to the, um, to the eBay listing if it's still on, and also um, the previous videos regarding the, uh, the, the floppy enhancements to this Amiga. Also, if you have a look in the description, there's all, all sorts of links for me, so if you want to follow me on Twitter on, or other social media, I've got a Facebook page, and there's ways of supporting the channel if you're so inclined. I'm also always willing to consider any donations of hardware or software or accessories because uh, the more I get, the more content I can produce. And that's it for this week. So thank you very much for watching once again. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, I'd really appreciate that too. I've just recently gone over 800 subscribers. 
I'm very, very pleased that that's happened. It's very encouraging. So yeah, if you if you enjoy my content, please subscribe. Okay then, everybody. Thank you very much, and I will see you next time.